this is Dorothy Fawn. I'm the voice of Meryl Strife from Trigon, Conan from Naruto, and Mercedes from Fire Emblem Three Houses. And you are listening to Podcast Across Worlds, Hawaii's number one podcast for anime and manga. Welcome to Podcast Across Worlds, where we like to read a lot of manga, watch a lot of anime, and talk about it for hours. I'm your host, Lahila Superfina. In today's episode, we're going to talk about webtoons, manhwas, manga that we are reading at the moment. Youngest chef from a third-rate hotel. The youngest, the youngest member of a four-star hotel kitchen in Korea has the ability to memorize different kinds of ingredients. However, as the youngest, he's still unable to escape dishwashing duty. This isn't really an accurate summary for this title because yes, he is the youngest chef. Yes, he's stuck in dishwashing duty. Yes, he has a ability. However, most of the story is about him in a competition. And he unravels the mystery of his dad that he didn't even know had a mystery you're unforgiven your majesty summary says a royal mistress of the emperor that's what ron satya could be to the man who loved her but framed with the attempted murder of the empress and her unborn child the punishment for such crime is death the resentment and betrayal of the emperor yields another life another chance rowan is the royal mistress once again but this time she curates a different life claiming revenge on the people that abandoned her and drove her to her death she creates a new place for herself this is a very accurate summary yes oh shoot i should also include the genres next one i will the archduke's pet the genre is fantasy jose mature romance royal family why is that a genre Warning, mature content. This manga contains materials that might not be suitable for to children under 17. By proceeding, you are confirming that you are 17 or older. Grand Duke Roslyn Idris Apeludin. Oh my gosh. The current emperor's only sister-in-law. She received a slave as a gift from her closest friend. Unable to release the wounded prisoner, Rosalind gave him the name Fenrir and nursed him by his side. Fenrir, who begins to open up to Rosalind after a while, begins to make her his only companion in life. Now, this one, the cover, kind of racy looking. However, the story starts with Fenrir as a boy <laughs> and it gets pretty funny. <laughs> I'm the main character's little sister. Genre is comedy, fantasy, manhwa, romance, shoujo. Summary is, until recently, I had three wishes that I could only hope to come true. Please let my missing brother, older brother, come back. Please let my second brother awaken so he could stop working as a rift porter. And my youngest brother, as long as he can open his eyes. There's nothing I want but happiness, was what I thought. <laughs> I'll only play for 10 years so I can keep the darkness inside me, so work a little harder, youngest. My older brother spoke as though he were still in his adolescence. Since older brother is playing for 10 years, I'll also play for 10 years too. My second older brother returned as an awakener from the future, as he claims to be said. My third older brother. Let's just move on since it makes my headache. You unemployed parasites. Why can't you all go out and find jobs? Can the future of Lee Bobai, a girl with nothing more to wish for, be full of happiness? I kept dismissing this title. However, I kept seeing an update. I kept dismissing it because I've read some satire like isekai stuff and it it's too campy, I want to say. So this one I kept dismissing it because it looked like satire. It is, but it works. I like it. It has a nice flow and what makes it like, good is because literally the younger sister would have been like a side character in all these isekai like titles. However, as she is a vehicle of this story, it's bearable and I like it. 
I like the point of view they put a twist on this. The hero is trying to change the heroine. Genre is drama, fantasy, historical, manga, romance, shoujo, webtoons. Summary is she transmigrated into the barely mentioned extra character Liberia. Of all things, it had to be in the wretched novel Becoming the Emperor, filled with war and disasters, where the heroine sacrifices herself for the hero and everybody dies. She had planned to hide her strength and live delicately and quietly, but the male Lee, Caesar, keeps seeking Liberia out and even goes so far as to propose marriage, expressing a desire to keep her by his side. Luberia, not wanting to meet the same fate as a heroine, tries her best to avoid Caesar. But due to his formidable appearance and persistence, she finds herself engaged to him before she knows it. Can Luberia survive without loving Caesar until the end? So the summary does it really good in hiding some aspects in the story, like we pretty much know why Caesar wants to be around Luberia from probably like the first and sec or second chapter. So it's not a secret. However, it's kind of like a nice surprise, even though it's early. So I really like how the summary hit it. It was really good. Tasteful. The moonlight shines on my fading future. Lunatia or is it Lunatia? I would say it's Lunatia. Lunatia, the daughter of a Viscount, was nothing more than a tool exploited by her family for her clairvoyance. She was even by her own fiancé. She eventually pays the price for her abilities by losing sight in one eye. The only future she sees awaiting her is one where all five senses are lost. Determined to live on her own terms and die an honorable death, Lunatia escapes from home. She finds refuge in the manner of the Marquis of the Lunar Eclipse, who is rumored to be seeking a new bride. With daring resolve, she proposes to this fearsome, seemingly inhumane man. If you make me your bride, I will read your future once a day. You don't have to love me, and when you no longer need me, please kill me with your own hands. Well, thus begins the marriage based on these unconventional terms. Though Lunatia tries to keep her dying senses a secret, this truth starts to come apart at the seams. But why is her supposedly cold-hearted husband suddenly revealing unexpected depths of devotion? This is actually interesting. Although they give pretty much a whole plot, the whole story, in the summary, the drama the angstiness of this showcases in this manhwa or our webtoon it is amplified so much like you don't even know they go up like 10,000 percent of the direness of this so i would say that this is a drama a mystery fantasy historical jose shoujo manhwa webtoon Holy Emperor's grandson is a necromancer. Genre are action, adventure, fantasy, manhwa, reincarnation, supernatural. Our MC dies from an accidental, or MC, main character, an accidental electrician, and ends up inhabiting the body of a young prince in another world. His new profession being the necromancer. He chose in the game who is playing before his untimely demise. However, things are not what they seem, including his own necromancy skills. Now, this one they leave out stuff. And I don't think it's reincarnation. I think it's transmigration. The way they explain how he's in the body and his setting and such. Like, he wakes up like, why am I in this body? Not waking up, hey, I have this person's memories. I've been living throughout their life, reincarnated, blah, blah, blah. No, it's a, holy cow, I woke up in this body. The person that they wake up in is the grandson of a holy emperor, so they have holy magic, their divine powers and such. However, this guy, he was playing a RPG game and he's a necromancer. That's where the necromancy skills comes in. And this is very interesting because he's using his necromancy skills, but they have holy power. <laughs> effects like purifying cleansing healing and whatnot 
And those are the titles that we've been reading recently. And y'all know that I am reading a lot more than that. So expect more episodes talking about manhwas, webtoons, and manga that we're reading. And if you guys have any suggestions, please let us know in the comments in whatever platform that you're listening or watching this podcast episode. And if there are any titles that we mentioned in this podcast across worlds episode, let us know which one you are interested. Other than that, keep reading manga, keep watching anime, and keep listening to podcasts across worlds. We'll see you on the next one. Ahoy ho. Thank you for listening to Podcasts Across Worlds. This is a passion project that was created by Lehua Superfina and is co-hosted by myself, Mikhail Casanova. If you enjoyed this episode and any of the topics that we talk about or any of the guests and voice actors and various people we have on the show, then make sure you do us a solid by, if you're watching it on YouTube, which is on youtube.com slash Lehua Superfina, then make sure you like the video, share it around with someone you think would enjoy it, as well as leave a comment on what you think could be improved or what you liked, what you didn't like, and all that in between. If you're listening to the show on any of the major podcasting outlets, such as Amazon Music, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or any of the others, then make sure you leave a rating, leave a comment, interact with the polls that we put out, and so much more. If you want to support the show, we do have Patreon, as well as many other methods for supporting. And with that being said, we're signing out. We hope you enjoyed this, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Keep listening, keep watching, and keep enjoying podcasts across worlds. We'll see you around.